Hi everyone, Ezreal Knight here, and welcome to day six of a fortnight of film, a vlogging marathon where I shoot a different roll of film every single day for 17 days. Now you might be asking, why 17 days when it's called a fortnight of film? And the reason for that is this was a Kickstarter campaign successfully backed by 58 very generous individuals, and I actually reached one of my stretch goals. I said that for every extra $150 that I raised, I would do one extra day of vlogging, and I, I made 123% of my goal, which added on an extra three days. So those last three days, I'll definitely do some more experimental stuff. Definitely stay tuned for that. And yesterday I asked my Instagram followers on stories, which film you'd like to see me shoot with, um, Polaroid, black and white, SX70 or Polaroid Color 600 film and by 69% of the vote you guys chose black and white SX70. A couple things I want to talk about. Uh, first off, concerning yesterday, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope you enjoyed seeing me um, struggle and rethink and refigure out things and all that kind of stuff. I hope you guys aren't getting too sick of black and white. Don't worry, color is coming back starting tomorrow. I'm going to take some risks, then I'm going to play it safe a bit, then I'm going to take risks again. My heart can't handle taking risks day after day. Just bear with me on that. I'm definitely going to be doing some more expired, discontinued film in the upcoming days. But I also need to be shooting stuff that's available for you guys as well. I can't just be shooting stuff that's completely unavailable to the public or hard to come by or expired or what have you. The other thing that I wanted to mention is I hope you enjoyed my black and white process and showing you guys how I do that. It's funny, I actually, one of the reasons why I did that was because I thought it would be easier than doing the montage. And then all of a sudden I've got a 35 minute episode that was really hard to edit all the banging and everything and getting the audio right totally backfired on me but i think it was worth it i think you guys will get something out of it even you more seasoned photographers might get a tip or two out of it uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of that for sure concerning polaroid film this will be the first time that i've shot polaroid as polaroid film and to clarify i've shot Impossible Project Film. Okay, $40 later, I got my pack of Impossible Project Film. I have eight shots. Um, actually make that seven shots because I already have one developing in my bag. And I'm gonna go drive around and look for some more stuff to shoot. I've shot Polaroid Originals. Despite all of these little issues, I would shoot with this film again, but I am gonna look for a new camera. So if you have any suggestions, be sure and let me know in the comments below. But they've recently repackaged it to just Polaroid. Now you guys can correct me if you think that I'm wrong, but my impression is that when a company redoes the packaging, that usually means they redo whatever formula is on the inside as well. I've noticed this in food, like if you see a if you see a product with fancy new packaging, it generally means that they've done something to the inside as well. So I don't think this is any different. I'm hoping that they've improved the formula on this and that we get some really nice black and whites from this. But I'm, I'm not too hopeful. The one thing that does bug me about Polaroid is that you've got to cover up your film right away. I mean, one of the biggest nostalgic points of Polaroid was taking the picture and then sitting there and watching it develop. It was amazing and it's something that but we don't see with Polaroid anymore. If you shoot Instax, you can do it with Instax. The only reason why I don't shoot with Instax is because I think the cameras are super ugly. I've seen some Instax backs for Lomography and stuff like that, but I haven't seen anything like my camera here, the Polaroid SX70. Now this one's special to me because I, it's a little hard to open, but this one's special to me. I went to an Etsy seller and I bought a wood grain finish and I had, and I redid this myself as per their instructions. And I think it looks just dandy. This isn't just like a paper, um, that's made to look like wood grain. This is like a wood grain cover for it. It's really thick. I don't know if you can see that. Not really. 
but it is super thick. Uh, it feels great. And I am so happy with my purchase. This is a Model 2 SX70. And I checked the date stamp at one point, but I can't remember when it was made. Somewhere early on. I think this is one of the Sears models too. I can't be certain. The one thing that does bother me about this, and this isn't Polaroid's fault, at least 1970s Polaroid's fault, um, but you've got to adjust the exposure compensation every time you open it. Because the speed of the new film is different from the speed of the old film. And that's just the way it goes. But yeah, with all that being said, I'm really looking forward to today. It's sort of like a cheat day for me because I don't have to do any developing. The one main challenge that I will have is I will only have eight exposures to work with. Now, this is normally where I say nothing to do now, but get this camera loaded. Um, but this camera is already loaded. I actually loaded it uh, weeks ago and I just haven't shot any frames with it yet. So nothing to do now, but head on out. All right, folks, I've arrived in the neighborhood of Kensington. I've shot here before quite a few times. It's a beautiful old neighborhood in Calgary, though right now not as beautiful because uh, there's a lot of construction going on and has been for the last couple of years. So hopefully when that's all done, it'll look nice. Uh, I really hope they don't tear down too many old buildings too, but I realize some of it is necessary. There's an apartment complex in particular that had structural integrity issues and everybody had to evacuate and then find a new place to live. And then it just stood there for like what seemed like two years with a bunch of stilts propping it up. Really sketchy stuff, really sketchy. So as mentioned, I've got Polaroid black and white and uh, I was reading the instructions for the black and white and it says that I only have to cover the frame for a minute for the black and white as opposed to six minutes for the color. So that is one good advantage. Now, again, the one thing I don't like about Polaroid is I've got to put this tongue on the end in order to protect the frame initially. I've got a different bag with me today. Hopefully this bag will allow me to um, take the frame and quickly stuff it into somewhere dark, but I'm gonna have to be really conscious of my shots. The other thing is, is that Polaroid shots, there is a certain quality, a certain subject matter that you can't quite put your finger on. There are certain subjects that just make sense for Polaroid shots, and I'm gonna be definitely looking for those today. Um, something that isn't moving too fast, obviously. Um, something that frames right on a square image. If I had to pick a word, I would say quaint. You have to look for quaint subjects. I believe there's a term called vernacular photography, and maybe that suits the uh, suits what I'm saying best. But if you shot Polaroid a whole bunch, then you know what I mean. You're looking for that slice of life, everyday stuff. You're not necessarily looking to go crazy, artistic. I mean, you're looking to be artistic. <sighs> You know what I mean. I, I overtaught, so time to get out there and see what I can find. Again, one more time, I've only got eight frames, so I have to be really choosy about what I shoot today. Just saw a couple of artists painting garages and I would have got a shot of it but uh, I'm shooting black and white today and it was in color I don't think it would have translated very well maybe when I do color in Kensington I'll come back and I'll snap a shot of it I cannot believe it 
It's the middle of October and it's 19 Celsius out right now. And they're calling for showers this weekend. Showers. Unreal. Unreal. I thought these I thought these were interesting. I wasn't sure if I had to have enough light, but it didn't sound like the shutter drag, so I think I'm okay. I'm halfway through my pack already. There's so much to see. And like this neighborhood is so creative. Here in Calgary, we've had a major hornet problem. And it seems like every single time, every single time a hornet swarms around me, there's a bunch of people around and I end up swatting at the air like a lunatic. Here's that building I was telling you about. They got most of it demolished now. Well, I've done my very best to take my time, but I am on my last frame now. So one more shot, and then I'm done. Okay, everyone, I have shot all my Polaroids. And before I do the big reveal, I have two things that I need to say. One, I have not looked at them yet. And two, I forgot to do exposure compensation on every single shot except for my first and my last. So I'm expecting overexposed shots. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at them and then hold them up to the camera here. And then at some point later on, I will scan them so you can, so you can see them without any glare or anything like that. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed those. This is probably the most fun I've had with Polaroid for a Polaroid related episode so far. I've had mixed results in the past, but today was a solid day. There was only one issue that I found, and that was this um, snowflake like pattern that came out of the side of my frame. And I'll just show that here. Yeah, so it came out of the side of the frame on several frames and I don't exactly know what caused it. I did a quick search. Someone seems to think that it's caused by shaking of the Polaroid and I know you're not supposed to shake it. Um, however, it was in my camera bag and I was walking and the bag's gonna shake while I walk and that does make it harder to shoot with this camera while I'm out and about. I didn't even notice it at first, to, to be honest with you, my wife pointed it out. Polaroid's all about the unpredictable results these days, so I'm not surprised nor upset with uh, a few blemishes. Only a couple of my shots ended up being overexposed as a result of me not using the exposure compensation, and that's gonna continue to happen. Just like my Nikon FE, where I don't remember to pull out the lever, I will always forget to do the exposure compensation adjustment when I open up my Polaroid SX-70. And there you have it, another one in the bucket, day six complete. Um, it went off overall without a hitch, as opposed to yesterday and having to find a new location and all that jazz. And yeah, I had a great time today. Again, the weather is just ridiculous. I will say though, they are calling for snow starting next week so i'm nervous plus excited because i know that you guys really want to see some crazy weather and 
with a week into this and only 10 days to go, I would like to see some variation in the weather. Just, just to mix it up a bit, just for that interesting video experience. Uh, hopefully not too crazy because I have to drive in it, obviously. However, uh, I would like to see some snow in my shots. And I think you would too. It's not up to me though, unfortunately. If you like what I do around here, perhaps you'll consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, if you want to see these videos a day early, like if you haven't already supported me on Kickstarter, or if you're not already a patron at the $5 level, and you want to see tomorrow's video right now, uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon at the $5 level. And you'll get all my videos a day or two early. I have other reward tiers as well which include free prints and stuff like that. And if not, that's okay too. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do to support the channel. Follow me on Instagram. If you want to vote for which film I shoot each day, follow my Instagram stories. You can also follow me on Twitter. And until tomorrow, stay classic. I could not have anticipated this. You're never going to believe this. You are never going to believe this in a million years.